It is almost time for the Winter Olympics and this little choir girl is obsessed with the Olympics. So of course I wanted to make sure that we were doing winter Olympic themed music lessons for the month of February. Now, if you're watching this, you know, before or after the Olympics or, you know, next year or the week, year after or whatever, you can still totally do these even if it's not an Olympic year. They're still super, super fun, but we are focusing in this video about like winter Olympic themed activities. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure you, first of all, hit the subscribe button. And just keep watching. All right, friends, I have eight different activities that go along with the Winter Olympics. Some of them are a little bit of a stretch. They're all rhythm. I almost said a lie. They're mostly rhythmic themed because I did a whole virtual field trip for my fourth graders to the Winter Games and really used that as the basis of this video because I had already come up with all the things. And so we have been learning 16th notes. So that's what I did all of the virtual field trip based off. And in there, there's a ton of rhythm activities, super fun stuff. I will link it down below in case you're interested. And yeah, but even if you don't have that, you can still do most of these activities. So let's get into it and talk about our rhythm activities with the winter games. All right, number one is if you wanna do elementary music lessons with the Winter Olympics theme, you definitely need to talk about the Winter Olympics. I was shocked at how few of my students knew about the Olympics, especially cause I'm filming this in 2022. And this is the year where we had the 2020 Olympics in 2021. So like we just had the summer Olympics and they still didn't know what the winter Olympics are. So we had to start by talking about what the Olympics are. And now I don't spend a ton of time on this because I don't teach like PE or anything like that, but I do like to tell them the Olympics is a huge competition that's held at a different place around the world every four years. And countries send their top athletes to compete in a whole bunch of different sports and so it's really cool because there's all these different people from all these different places playing all these different games and you know people win and it's like a big deal and it's really exciting and it's a lot of fun i love the olympics did i mention that i don't even play sports have never played sports have never been interested in sports but i love the olympics so uh, that's kind of pretty much all i told them about the winter olympics then i like to show them a quick video that shows them like a couple of different olympic games in the winter olympics especially because we live in georgia and i don't know what you know about georgia but i'll just tell you that like on christmas it was almost 80 degrees this year like we don't we don't see snow we don't ice skate we don't do anything that is in the winter olympics so my kids have no idea what like winter sports are so we have to watch a video to show us what winter sports are i'll link the one we've been using down below it's not like amazing but it's been fine and so i watch i have them watch it and i just ask them to like pay attention to what sports they see and then at the end we'll talk about the different sports I've also been using the part of my virtual field trip where we are sorting different Olympic theme words by their rhythms. So like, you know, luge would be like ta, but like a half note because that's what I put in there. Um, but then like figure skater would be like 16 notes because that's like four sounds. So we go through that and that also helps us to be like, okay, these are different winter Olympic themes. So there's that. Okay. And so that just gives us like a vocabulary to kind of start with. We can talk about some of them as we go and just really helps like solidify the theme of what we're doing. Then we get to do probably my favorite thing. I probably should have saved my favorite thing for last, but we're going to start with it. And that is ice skating. So classroom ice skating is something I have done from the very beginning, like my first year of teaching, but I've always done it with the little kids. And this year I did it with fourth grade and they loved it. We had so much fun so if you have laminate floors you can literally ice skate ice skate um in your socks like i usually actually usually i bring a bunch of old socks that i've washed and i'll let them borrow them if they don't have socks on um this time i was just like if you don't have socks on then you can just use your socks and some of the kids didn't want to take their shoes off so they just like stepped and that was fine i didn't care um if you have carpet you can use paper plates to put on their feet you can use i've seen people do um like laminated paper you can do like snowflakes and like laminate them or like make little pretend skis and laminate them um those things all work i've done those before as well the paper plates do disintegrate after a while so be aware of that but since we have laminate floors i literally just have them at sock skate and so to make it a little bit more interesting for the fourth graders what we do is first i show them like all of the different rhythms we know and they stay in their seat and they walk the rhythm so like i'll play um either the olympic theme or winter from like vivaldi's winter um number 
one i think is the really upbeat one and so we'll like walk like quarter notes and then like eighth notes and then we're doing 16th notes so like 16th notes um and then we'll go through that once and then after that i'll have them go around i have carpets in the middle so we'll go around the carpets like speed skaters do sometimes i show them a video of the speed skaters so things see what you know like the ellipse kind of thing going on um in their socks or with their feet and if they use just use their shoes then they just kind of like slide they have had such a fun time with this it's been a huge hit i was really nervous the first week i was like i don't know how this is gonna go and so a lot of times when i try something new i'll have the kids tell me i'm like can you just tell me like thumbs up i like that thumbs down i didn't or like eh, it was okay and they were all like and i was like okay cool um so that worked with my fourth graders and it was a huge huge hit Hit. now in the virtual field trip there is an activity with this that goes along with vivaldi's winter and it actually is a video that you can play and it has like all the rhythms it like switches to kind of go along with the music um so you can do that and you just play the video and the kids can do it and it, so it'll be again it'll be like ta 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 or like ti 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 etc etc the next thing is winter olympics composing i have really fallen in love with having the kids create their own music this year so composing improvising i've never been great at it but we're making it happen this year because the kids love it and i find that even you know if they are struggling a little bit like because they you know haven't been to music in two years because of covid then they are still having a really great time and they can kind of modify it to their level so if you're doing like rhythmic composing and there's a fourth grader but they only remember two rhythms they can just use those two rhythms and it's fine and so they kind of like differentiate it for themselves all that to say i love composing and i love having a theme so one thing i like to do is having like pictures associated with the different rhythms to help the kids compose so i printed out a whole bunch of i will link them down below a whole bunch of different like clip art and rhythms so we have like figure skater and there's some that are blank and then some that have rhythms so it'll say like you know 16 notes on figure skater and so they'll just make their own little patterns and we've been doing this in centers and what i've had them do is create a pattern and then on a whiteboard like draw out the pattern so they're then getting practice creating the pattern saying the pattern and also writing the pattern so they can get used to like writing their rhythms and if they forget how to write them the pictures are right there to show them like this is what you're writing excellent easy peasy um so that's a really great centers activity because you don't need to like stand over them for them to figure it out um so you know they're just over there making all sorts of different rhythms and so it'll be like figure skater, hockey player, skis, um, you know, whatever, and so on and so forth. You can also use this to help them figure out like measures and how many beats per measure. I intentionally made them different beats per measure so that we could work on that as well. And it's just, you know, it's one of those things that's really simple, but you can make it really exciting. You can also like add instruments, you can put them on the orphan instruments, you can do whatever you want. And it's a great time. So highly recommend that one, whether you purchase my set or make your own. All right, now bear with me on this next one and that is bob sledding. I actually filmed a video in my room not of my kids because that is not a line that I am crossing, but after school was over I filmed a video just so that you can see kind of like in my room what I'm talking about. But basically, I have the kids get in their bob sled group, so there's a couple of kids in a group and the person in the back and I'll say and I take my oh, there we go. And I take my rhythm cards that come in my virtual field trip that are all you know themed because you gotta have a theme and so i spread them all out and the kid and i will say one of them and one of the kids from each team has to go and find that and if they find that then their bobsled moves forward i will cut to the video here so you can see what that is all right so in order to play the bobsled game what i do is i put the rhythm cards all out these are ones that are included in my virtual field trip to the winter games because they're all winter games themed as you can see and so i spread them all out and then i have these dots on the carpet so what i do is i have the kids sit on this carpet in rows so like green team orange team purple team yellow team red team and they go you know back the main thing is that the first person is in the same spot so the reason is whoever is in the back i'm going to say one of the rhythms that are over there and whoever is in the back has to race down and find the rhythm if you have those like scooters that would be even better because it would be much more bobsledish um but i don't have the scooters so this is what we're doing like you know those gym scooters like you sit on anyway so they run down they find the correct rhythm and whoever gets the correct rhythm 
they earn a point for their team. So how I do that is I have them come and sit on the next dot. So if green team won, then they're going to come sit here. So now the last person has moved up. And then if they win again, then the last person moves up to the next one. So for me, I do when they get to the edge of the carpet, that is when their team wins. You could also just keep score or you could um, have like pretend. So in the virtual field trip, there's this version explained and there's also a version where it's like all digital and you have little icons of like sledding people and you can move them across. So either of those things works just fine. The next one is learning about the Olympic theme itself because John Williams need I say more. So the Olympic theme is actually really short, but there are a whole bunch of different Olympic themes. So you might want to check out the whole album. It is available on iTunes and there's a ton of different things you can do with that. You can do listening activities. We did it with the skating one time and then we did winter one time. You can add instruments. You can talk about different instruments. I love talking about the brass instruments with this one because they're like, like super loud um which makes my you know trombone playing husband very excited and so that and you can also talk about john williams so i love talking about john williams i have a whole like tbt thing that i did like a whole slideshow where it goes through like all the different themes and all that kind of stuff it does not include the olympic theme but it does talk about like you know other themes so that's fun too um so learning about John Williams or learning about the Olympic theme, you can talk about like how he wrote it. You can talk about the instruments that appear in it, all of those good things. All right, the next one is curling. Now curling is one of those sports that is like, what is this? Literally the kids, well, the first time I watched the video, the kids were like, what was that thing where they're like throwing things? And I had to like explain curling to them and I don't really understand curling. So like it was really difficult, but we do, curling as like a group composition activity where the kids have to throw their stone not stone bean bags they have to slide their bean bags across the floor and whoever gets closest to the rhythm gets to use that rhythm for their composition and then when you get to the your whole composition so if you get you know eight or however many rhythms you got then you have a full composition and that team wins you could also do this with beats per measure so in my virtual field trip i explain how to do it in person if you're doing it that way and then i also show how and then there's also a digital version where kids can do it for beats per measure so you can have the kids um so you could do instead of like full rhythm cards like you know ta ticka ticka ta ta you could just have like a quarter note and then like eighth notes and whoever gets closest to them gets to take that one or you know wherever you land you get to take that one until you fill up your measure and when you fill up your measure then that person would win whoever fills it up first without going over which is the tricky part so a couple of different ways that you can do curling i'm going to cut to a little video that i filmed so you can kind of see at least a little bit of what i mean here all right, in order to play our curling game, the first thing you need is some rhythm cards and you're gonna spread them out. If you wanna be super fancy, you can make like a whole curling, like the rings inside of the rings and then have the rhythms inside of those. That would be awesome. Um, I did not do that um, because I'm lazy. And then take some bean bags or I didn't have bean bags, so I'm using these little like snowball things. You could use just anything and have the kids stand at a certain point and they have to take whatever bean bag you have and slide it to the rhythm then the other team is also going to slide it to the rhythm and whoever gets closest to the rhythm gets to keep it so they pick up this rhythm whoever is closest takes this rhythm and takes it back to their group now i like to have a recording sheet so the kids will actually write this rhythm on the recording sheet and then at the end you know that someone has won when one team has their whole recording sheet figured out so i have like boxes on mine that has like eight i think it's eight boxes so once they've gotten eight rhythms then that team has one and now they have a rhythm that they can play for everybody and you can even make it better by adding instruments to it you could have them add melody to it after that is done I know that those um, curling and bobsledding activities were like really a stretch, but my kids have loved them and they've, you know, just been happy to have a theme. So like I mentioned, these things are available in my virtual field trip. So I will link it down below so that you can check that out if you want to. It is all about 16th notes. So you can use it, you know, with your third graders, with your fourth graders, whoever you're doing 16th notes with and have a really great time. I hope I try to really make my resources, especially the virtual field trip, super easy. So you can just like throw it up on the screen and 
and do it but this one is a little more complicated because there are like different games all of the games have like a fully digital version and then sometimes they have a like in the classroom version so you have like different options so make sure that you check those out so that you'll know what you you know want to do and what you don't want to do and you can choose whichever thing you want so check that out in the link down below and let me know what kind of things you would like to see coming up in the future are there any more like fun events or holidays that you want to see are there you know just i don't know whatever you want to see let me know down below in the comments because i am really enjoying these like you know trying to get real creative coming up with ways that you can you know bobsled and curl in music if you're an elementary music teacher don't forget to hit the subscribe button because i post videos way more than a human should so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye mm -hmm.